ground control to Major Tom. Ground control to Major Tom. Olvastuk, hogy kilenc éves voltál, amikor eldöntötted, hogy, hogy űrhajós leszel. Sok gyerek eldönti kisgyerekként, hogy, hogy űrhajós lesz, hogyan lettél, tehát tényleg az. És hogyan jött az ötlet, hogy azt szeretnél lenni? But when I decided to be an astronaut, it was just before I turned 10. It was the, I don't know if you remember this, the time that you turned 10 years old, but you're starting to see the world. And, but that summer that I turned 10, the first two people walked on the moon. So it, it was like turning a page in history or opening a door of invitation of impossible things happening. So it inspired me and, and millions and millions of kids to think about what they were going to do. But I just thought, that's now possible. So why don't I do that? You know, I'm going to do something. Why don't I do that? That's a cool thing. <laughs> what is it I'm actually trying to do? Where do I want to be five years from now? And, and so I just used it as, as kind of uh, uh, like, like maybe the way a shepherd moves sheep. And like we're all trying to get up to that field over there and I need to move this way and move this way and do this and do this. And we'll, we may or may not get up to that field, but that's the way I'm going to herd my life along and, and try and gain skills, try and become uh, more and more capable just in case someday Canada said, hey, we're looking for astronauts. <laughs> and, and so I could say, these are my qualifications, I think you should pick me. But I never counted on being an astronaut. The odds are terrible. There are, there are more people who have won Nobel Prizes than have flown in space. It's extremely rare. So you can't ever count on it. You just have to have it as a long-term, distant way to decide what to do next you know, in life. And I was just very lucky that I got to do all those things that I loved, but also at the end of it, um, with my particular little herd of sheep, got to, got to fly in space three times. I got to get to know David Bowie a tiny bit. And he wrote this song in 1968, before people had even been to the moon. And it was a fantasy in his head. And for him to see me do it up in space, he, he just loved it. He, he, he delighted in it. He, he said it was the best version of the song ever done. And, and, and it, put, it put a big smile on his face. And he was dying. And, uh, to know that, uh, that my particular version of this song gave Mr. Bowie um, a lot of pleasure in the last year of his life, to me, that was, that was maybe the best part. Budapest tomorrow, I'm going to have a chance to, uh, to meet a lot of people directly. Uh, I've written uh, different books and recorded music, uh, but the first book is in Hungarian, uh, An Astronaut's Guide to Life on Earth. Ah, yeah. the first book is in Hungarian, An Astronaut's Guide to Life on Earth, and uh, it's in 20 languages now, uh, but I'm delighted that, it, that it's in Hungarian, and it's kind of my best ideas on, on if you challenge yourself to do something really, really difficult, like flying a rocket ship or commanding a space station, what do you learn from that? What's useful out of that? And I, I lectured and spoke in schools and things for years and years, and I wrote this book, and, and a lot of people have found it to be a, a useful book. So I'll have a chance to meet people and shake hands and, and sign books uh, and CDs and such. But then later at, uh, at the Brain Bar Budapest, uh, I'll take the stage and talk about some of the ideas that are in this book, uh, some of the fun things that astronauts get to do, some of the images of the world, maybe show a few pictures of Hungary, and then talk to the audience and answer our questions uh, best I can to try and share the experience. And then maybe play a little music. We'll see. But I think it'll be a very fun day. Planet Earth is blue And there's so much left to do